Hello guys, we're about to start with another tutorial from my FX series. In this video, I will show you how to create a thick dust effect in Autodesk Maya when a military helicopter lands on the ground. My name is Reza and welcome to my channel. taken this request from MCJK077, one of our subscribers, and it, the idea immediately clicked as we haven't tried this type of effect in this channel. So I thought it would be a good idea to put this into practice and share it with everyone. So let's get to work. Well, the first step is to do some research. I watched a lot of videos, I looked at a lot of photos to kind of get a better understanding of the patterns for the dust and how big they are and how thick they are. And I was quite surprised. Let me share my some of my results with you. Now, this is the one of the first um, images I kind of came across. And you can see how big the pattern is and how thick the pattern is. Now you can see because of the thickness, it actually casts shadow on the ground. I was trying to think about the color temperature. I was thinking about the actual color of the dust and how um, kind of force field has an impact on the effect itself. Here's another one that kind of shows how opaque the dust gets to the point that you kind of barely see uh, one of the wheels. Now, another characteristic of this is usually on a dusty ground, it starts from colored and as it rises, as the dust rises, it gets more and more white. But again, I try to kind of mimic that sort of opacity since this helicopter kind of is close to what I have in the scene. Here's another one. You can see the thickness, you can see the density and how wide this um, dust is, how big it gets and how much the propellers kind of push the dust around. It creates a kind of vortex effect at the same time it rises up. And here's another example, which, um, you know, needs no introduction, at least for this one. The dust is awfully thick. So after doing some research, I realized that what I had in mind to begin with was not actually correct. And that's why it's always important to start with some research, watch some videos, look at some images, real life footages and see if you can kind of get inspired and borrow ideas. There's this another one. And this one is actually quite useful. It shows um, the sort of the size of the dust um width and height how much it rises and how big this circle gets which is sort of a vorticity effect that gets created um, and we can kind of simulate that in maya so after that i went back to the scene um, I tried to look for a, a suitable background and I came up with this image from Unsplash. I will put the link in the description. It's a, a free image, but you just need to log in or create an account and download this image. I didn't use the near ground um, portion. I just used the kind of background and the sky. Did a little bit of color correction on it. So I ended up creating this image, which is pretty much um, the same thing. I just changed the temperature um, and added a little bit of haze in Photoshop and of course cropped it as well so it fits into this scene. The near ground in this scene is nothing but just a grid with a noise modifier as my bump. I rigged the helicopter, which is fairly simple. I have um, one main control and two controls for two propellers. So that wasn't really uh, too difficult. And 
the animation again I went back and looked at some of the references I noticed there's always a bit of a hesitation when the helicopter tries to land again this is by no mean an animation course so as long as it sends a message across I was happy with it so very very simple and also another thing I did I thought maybe you guys want to try this in nighttime so I animated the lights as well now the good news is this scene is available through my patreon page which I put the link in the description below just go into the patreon page and download the scene I get a lot of requests for some other scenes as well as long as I model them and create the scene I'm more than happy to make them available to you via my patreon page so make sure to take a look at that as well so we have everything ready we have the animation 25 frames per second we have the helicopter we have uh, just a simple ground a simple sky and we are ready to go now let's get started with the actual tutorial now we are going to start with a uh, fluid containers I'm probably going to select these two and make sure that they're assigned to the ground and I'm going to turn the ground off for now and the background so we can kind of concentrate on the fluid simulation. Now every time I deal with fluid I tend to create my own geometry emitter. I usually don't rely on the native emitter that comes with 3D or to the containers so for the purpose of this tutorial also I'm just going to create my own geometry and turn that to an emitter now what we're going to use is just a normal simple disk now this disk is super tiny so I'm going to increase its size to something like 35 maybe 45 so it's right underneath the helicopter by the way the way that I animated this I intentionally landed this helicopter right at the center but you guys if you have the helicopter in another location in the scene feel free to move the emitter around that happens or that applies to the container as well now we have this uh, ready to go I'm just going to ever so slightly move this up maybe 0.2 so it won't intersect with the container we're about to create remember the emitter has to be inside the container so if you don't leave that up or lift it up in y-axis then you may end up losing um, sort of volume or you may get some artifacts make sure that whatever emitter you have is inside the container now next is to actually create the container itself gonna make sure that I'm in effects menu set by the way always a good idea to rename this I'm gonna rename this dust emitter underscore geometry the reason I put underscore geo is because I would like to um, have that differentiation between the actual emitter and the geometry that is attached to the emitter you know what I'm talking about in a second so I'm gonna go to uh, with the geometry selected well no need to select the geometry for now we just want to create the fluid container so I'm going to go to fluid container I'm just going to reset its settings um, I'm not going to change anything really the only thing I'm going to change is add emitter set to none because we are about to convert our geometry to an emitter apply and close again so far the emitter is just tiny but that's okay um, I mean we can probably just add its size sort of we want the entire helicopter to be in the scene something like that again trying to be mindful I really want this this to be inside the emitter um, you can rename it if you want but the th most important thing is you need to make sure that there is no native emitter comes with this container now time to connect the two select one the emitter um, shift select the other one which is the container now let's connect the two we go to fluid and then we go to add edit contents and we go emit 
from objects option box. I already put dust emitter in there because that's the name I use. And you want to make sure that the emitter type is set to surface. We don't want Omni, we don't want curve. So surface it is and apply. Let's see if the emitter reacts inside the container. That is in fact the case. Perfect. First step done. Now you probably have noticed that this is just <laughs> horrendous. The, the, the fluid looks very ugly and we can see even the steps. And these steps are actually voxels that we're watching. The reason is the base resolution is just way too low. I controlled A to go to the attribute editor, fluid shape node under container properties, base resolution needs increasing. Now I'm not going to go crazy to 100 or 200 uh, right off the bat. I always try to keep it as low as possible and only increase this value if I need it. I'm going to start with 30, that will do for now. And this attribute defines the resolution of my fluid container in voxels. So this is not meter, this is not density per second, this is just voxels that I have in this container. As a matter of fact, if you ever want to see the, the density of the voxels, you can always go in here and go into boundary draw instead of bottom, just go full and you see 30 by 30 by 30 voxels because the resolution is now set to 30. But of course we don't want that because not much can be seen really with that density. So I'm just gonna switch it back to um, bottom. So only see the voxels at the bottom. And in this case, I barely see them. Now that's a good start. Let's talk about boundaries now. If I just play, we can see what we see definitely looks sharper and crisper. Now we need to set the boundaries. I don't want the uh, smoke to be pushed down, right? So I'm gonna set the boundary to minus Y side. I also want to set the boundary X and boundary Z to none. Now, when you set a boundary to none, uh, kind of it kind of opens the fluid container. So the fluid behaves um, as though the boundary isn't even there. Whereas if you set the boundary to both sides or X sides or so on and so forth, you're actually creating an invisible wall and the um, fluid hits the wall and bounces back, which is not something that we want. So with that, we still need to make some changes because if I click and play, now you can see in here, probably I can zoom in. This won't get bounced, it goes out, but we know that if the fluid goes outside the container, it won't live, it dies. And that's why we see that cutoff here and there. But that's okay, we can definitely address that and we can definitely fix that. The way to fix it is to go to auto resize. Now, when you turn on auto resize, uh, the voxels near outer boundaries of the container um, will get extended. And as a result of that, the shape of the boundary shrinks or grows. Right now we've got a fixed size boundary or container. As soon as you go to auto resize and turn this on, then the container grows based on the location of the fluid and reacts, the, bound, the container reacts to the fluid, which is perfect. Now, another thing you need to be mindful of is you want to make sure that the resize close boundaries is off. And that's usually the case when you set a boundary to none. Now the fluid container only resizes along the axis that have their respective boundary attributes set to none, which is 
in our case, boundary X and boundary Z. We kind of constrain that. So if I go and play, you can see now it reacts accordingly. We don't see any cutoff um, and it just rises. The fluid rises, the density in our case, and our container reacts to it. So far, so good. Now, another problem I have is the fluid Im starts immediately, right away. Whereas what we want is the helicopter to get closer to the ground and only then we see the fluid is sort of rising and rotating and just going all over the place. But right now, when we have this distance, I really don't want the dust to rise too early otherwise everything will look ridiculous now we need to control this via the emitter so I'm gonna to go to dust emitter under basic emitter attribute and we have access to the rate now I really don't want to see the evaluation happening so I'm just gonna go and select the fluid go to fluid shape node and disable the evaluation so I can actually scrub back and forth without seeing any density rising up now let's go to dust emitter and actually find uh, the right frame for us to kind of start with the the dust. Of course, I may change this, uh, but for now, I think around frame 100 would be a good time for the dust to start. And then it kind of peaks until frame 300. And then again, it settles in and kind of goes all over the place after frame 300 to whatever frame I have in mind. I mean, this number may change in your own scene, so you kind of need to observe and evaluate it carefully, but I think really at this point, I'm gonna right click, set this one to zero, so I want frame uh, zero to have no rate up until frame 100, so I'm just going to um, set a key in here, and then, uh, Right on frame 100, I want the fluid to start. I'm gonna go in. Yeah, maybe 300 would be a good value, actually. Um, set it to 300, and I really peak that to something like two, which is relatively a high number. And after that, maybe around 380, I want this to go back to one, now, this is a big, big value because of the scene scale. Remember that if your scene is tiny, um, you may need to adjust this number accordingly. I'm going to go all the way to frame 500 and I kind of make that almost disappear, something like 0.2 or 0.3. Set a key. Now, if I right click on the attribute, go to output channel, I can actually see what I did. So frame 100, no emission and the emission starts from frame 100 and it kind of peaks until um, we reach frame 300. It goes to two, reduced to uh, one, frame 380 and kind of diminishes, uh, goes all the way to frame 500, which is the extent of my timeline. Yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a plan. Let's play. Oh, I need to enable the evaluation. So I'm just gonna go turn off, disable evaluation, repeat again, nothing happens. Frame 100 starts. Yeah, the timing is much better now. Of course, we've got a really, really boring sort of smoke rising right now. Um, nothing really happens, but at least the timing makes sense. Now, next is to kind of give this um, fluid a little bit of quality and also probably a little bit of density. See how blurry those edges are? This usually happens when you have a drop off. So if you go to fluid shape node and go all the way, actually it's in the emitter, dust emitter, 
and you go to fluid attribute, the drop off fluid is there. And usually I found out that the value of two is very, very high for most of the cases that I'm working on. So I'm going to probably reduce it to something like 0.01. I don't want to make it zero at the same time. I want to make it almost zero and probably um, not too sure. This is something that I'm just playing around with. Probably I want to give this a little bit of density. I want to make this um, density thicker, make it thicker because based on my references, we need a super dense dust to the point that we almost make our object invisible. And that's intentional. Now let's go and play. Now we should have a much crisper density. Yes, that's in fact the case. That's good. I'm kind of looking around here and here it looks good. If you still see this and you're wondering why, that needs to be fixed through resolution. So this base resolution will fix that. But for now, we keep it at three um, at 30. That's good. I'm going to go to fluid emission turbulence to give this emitter little bit of turbulence. Remember, this doesn't give or transfer emitter to the container. This is just going to add turbulence to the emitter itself. So don't confuse this with the turbulence that you see on the fluid shape node or the one that we have in fields and solvers. So these are two different things. We're just adding turbulence to the emitter and that base look that mushroom looking base look will change a little. We add a little bit of more interesting patterns to that. Now let's put that into practice. If I go and give this turbulence a little bit of value, set it to 10 and rewind, you can see the type of pattern that we're getting right off the bat emitting from density will look way more interesting. Look at that. We kind of killed that sort of um, really, really boring, completely mushroom looking fluid and turn it into something slightly more interesting. Nowhere near finished, but <laughs> that's a good starting point. Next is to actually give our density a little bit of movement. Uh, you may have noticed from my references that we have that vortex effect in almost all of our images, the references that I found. So we kind of want to start with that type of movement and kind of get rid of that boring rising effect that we see from this density. Now this happens just, uh, it's as simple as adding a simple field and solver. So with my container selected, if I go to field and solver and vortex, I'm just going to click on that. By default, it creates a vortex node and it puts it right in the middle. What I usually do if I want to have an impact on an area, I usually enable volume controls. Now, if I go to volume controls and cylinder, now I can scale it. Well, right now I can't see it because I need to go to show and enable deformers and dynamics. There you go. So um, I can actually increase its size, maybe more something like 66. I'm just going to sort of round that. That's good. I would like to give this a magnitude. So I'm going to go to attribute editor in magnitude section. I'm really going to crank it up something like 120. I'm not too sure about this. Again, I'm just punching in numbers. I'm going to see the result. And based on the result, I will change these values. I want this to have an impact on the entire scene. So will reduce the attenuation to something very, very low. So um, it will have an impact on the scene itself. 
Now, without changing too many things, let's rewind and play. Let's see what we're getting. Now it should start spinning. That is right. Now we're talking. See how one field can make a difference? Works beautifully. Excellent. So that works just fine. I may reduce this to something like 110 or maybe 100. It's a bit too much. It's really pushing everything down as well. But again, for now, I'm just going to keep it and let's move on. Next is to include or bring in a little bit of chaos. So I'm going to select the container. I'm going to go to fields and solver. And now this time I'm going to add the turbulence to the container itself. I'm going to go in there and reset its settings. I'm going to give this a good number, a high number, something like 20. Let's play and see what sort of results we're getting. We should see more chaos now. I'm going to kind of break that uniform pattern. And again, it might be a bit too much. Not actually. It actually works quite beautifully. It's just the magnitude for the vortex field that is a bit too high, which I can easily bring down. So I'm going to bring down this to something like 100. It's more manageable. Now, next is to kind of push the dust around. Now, we took care of the rotation, but still it kind of stays in this area and rises, whereas what I want is to really, truly push it out, even outside this scene. If I bring this um, reference again, this one, you can see how far actually the dust goes and kind of swirls as well. Um, and that, we, we cannot get this out of Vortex alone. So I'm going to select the container as well, again, and go to here and go to volume axis. And that is just an extra push that we inject to our container to get better results. I'm just going to reset its setting. Um, volume shape is set to cube. I know for a fact that I don't want cube because cube is omni. It kind of pushes the dust all over the place, up and down, left and right. I want cylinder. So I'm going to select cylinder, go create, and again, increase its size to something like, I don't know, maybe 85. It's not really that important. The value that you put in is actually more important. Another thing I noticed is when I uh, in created my uh, turbulence, my attenuation is still set to one. I'm going to reduce that to almost zero. I'm going to go back to vortex field. Now I need a lot of push. I need a huge amount uh, just to really push those dust to um, Z axis and into X axis. So I'm going to start with something like very, very high. And I know for a fact this is a bit much, but we'll see how we go. Um, 200 should do the trick. And I'm just going to play to see what sort of result I'm getting and how far this will get pushed. Yep, that is definitely better now. I think I still need to lower my vortex. And I definitely need to lower my axis field. And I probably need to increase my turbulence. I'm off to a good starting point. So let's do that. I'm just going to lower this uh, vortex to something like 90. Turbulence to maybe 23. And volume axis. Hmm, that one is a tricky one. I really don't know what would be the right value. For now, I'm just going to reduce it to half. Now, you may have noticed that I, I haven't even had a chance to look into um, 
contents details and all the attributes that fluid has to offer so you can see how important external fields are to get or to block out the shape that you want and based on that you go and add to uh, what you have now let's go to contents details and have a really quick look content method we want density and velocity no need to have temperature or fuel uh, i'm going to go to dynamic simulation added just a tad of damp small amounts of damping can be quite useful when boundaries are open to kind of keep um, strong winds from building up and leading to instability so because we have boundaries in x and z set to none so boundaries are basically open having a little bit of damp is going to be quite useful another attribute that i usually enable is um, high detail solve and that option uh, reduces diffusion of density another way to get a crisper result it also reduces diffusion on velocity which is very very useful in um, effects like fire in effects like smoke anything to do with density and sometimes temperature using high detail solve is ideal for creating all sorts of effects like explosion rolling clouds and smoke so i'm going to set this one to all grids i'm not going to change the sub steps which is the number of times of solver uh, performs calculations it's good for fast moving objects not for um, static emission geometry that we have here so we don't want that um, and because we're not changing sub step we don't need to enable emit in sub steps i'm going to leave liquids alone um, auto resize we already talked about it i'm going to leave or skip basically self-attraction and go straight into contents detail with density i have a tendency not to change density scale much that's why we change the rate with buoyancy and dissipation we are not going to change that i want uh, these two to control that rather than putting a fixed value in here and limit ourselves now one thing i probably need to change under velocity is swirl i want to get a little bit of swirl in the scene and make the result look more interesting so i'm going to set that to something like 1.3 that should do the trick little bit of noise uh probably we don't know, even notice that but um that's that's just gonna work for us turbulence internal turbulence we really don't need since we added external turbulence force field and that's going to just work beautifully for us now i think the rest in here if i select the fluid shape node the rest is not that important until we get to shading if i can find it here yes there we have it i'm just going to collapse content detail and collapse dynamic simulation and go straight into shading that's where the majority of our changes take place but before I get ahead of myself, I'm just going to bring the background and um, the ground level that I have. I'm going to cache the scene really quickly, get a play blast out and get a good understanding of the flow and the pattern. And then I can go and recolor it because there's a good chance that I still go back to some of these nodes into volume access and turbulence and vortex and may make some minor changes so um, let's have a look at the results so far and based on that i'm going to make further changes so with the container selected and this is something that we discussed in the previous videos as well to to cache i'm going to go to end cache first things first you need to make sure that you set project and it targets your cache folder inside the project directory and with that set which i've already done you go to create new cache and then maya fluid it's a fluid simulation and then it successfully finds the um the right scene the right address the rest is pretty much um 
self-explanatory you really don't need to change anything fluid shape if you want to change it you know you can just go ahead and change it i'm just going to um get rid of the number two underscore dust zero one something like that and then i go create once it's done i'm just going to go and do a quick play blast we're going to have a look at the result and tweak the result further so we'll be right back okay let's have a look i just cached um, the first 330 frames and play blasted it um, and immediately saw a few things that i need to change now first things first i try not to look at the colors obviously the color is just too white uh, but apart from that, I believe it's just a tad too thick. Now, um, another thing I don't have is enough lighting information and resolution. And probably on top of that, I need uh, shadows. So a few things that I need to work on and we're almost there. So magnitude of 90, I think I was happy with 100, so I'm just going to bring it back to 100. Turbulence, I can go 25 probably. And volume axis, I think it was a bit too much, so I'm just going to reduce it to 90. Now I immediately go to my emitter and bring the density to something like 4.5. And in here, I might be able to go from zero from frame 100 to maybe 1.5 and then 0.75 to point 0.1, something like that. I'm going to set up the field. I'm going to go to end cache and delete the cache and be ready to redo it. Uh, probably I'm going to go to show and get rid of the dynamics and I'm going to select the container go to display and for now I don't want to display it I'm just going to select it from the outliner if I really need to I'm going to scroll down into shading and that's where I make the majority of my changes now first things first color probably white wouldn't be a wise move I'm going to select um, something like this, which is a more of a dusty looking color. You can always go ahead and sample it from here too. So I um, think that's a good idea. Sample one from here. So I'm gonna get really close and probably another one and sample that from maybe here. Something like that, we'll see how we go. Um, also, I'm gonna go to lighting and enable self shadow. I think that's gonna help us dramatically as it adds a little bit of depth to our dust effect. Now, there's always rooms to tweak and see what we're getting. Right off the bat, I noticed that the smoke is a bit too dark. Maybe self shadow set to 0.3 is much better. Yeah, there you go. And most importantly is the base resolution. Now it's time to kind of crank it up. I'm not going to go too crazy from 30 to something like 60 should do the trick. I'm not going to increase it more than that. Okay. Let's do another round of caching and play blasting and see um, if the result is good. If not, we'll find a way to improve the result. So we're gonna be back in a second. All right, we're back. If I play, you can see the result is way more pronounced. It's way much sharper and all in all, it looks much better. Now, there is one optional step that is available to you guys, and you can make use of it. And I, I do use it actually from time to time, and that is opacity. Now, all, all the color artifacts that you see can be fixed in, in rendering, 
But what I usually do if I select the fluid and go back into shading and bring in the opacity underneath shading rollout, you can actually, if I go into maybe here, you can give this a pattern. Look at that. With just one small click, you can add to the thickness and to the look of your um, fluid or dust in this case. So to me, that actually looks better. And this is totally optional. It comes down to your look development. And, you know, if you see that the situation is calling for it, definitely go for it. Um, I personally think this is something that many artists should use, making use of the opacity. Of course, if you feel that this is something that, you know, your reference doesn't show it, then that's fine. But if you feel like your reference is actually suggesting something like this, um, definitely make use of it. Makes the whole result uh, much better. So I think I'm happier with opacity added. And another thing that I tend to add is render layers. So, so far, what I have, I put the fluid container on a collection, right? And then I put the geometry, which is the sky, the ground, the helicopter and the lights on a layer. And I put this um, helicopter light, that flashing light on another layer. Now you can go ahead into your render settings and in here you can select whether you want to render the geometry, the fluid or um, the flashlight, it's up to you. But you can render as beauty as well. The amount of control that you have is not going to be uh, much. So just saying in advance that although you have that ability, that the level of adjustments and controls will get limited. It doesn't matter if you want to use After Effects or Nuke. Having layers allow you to save time if something goes wrong, or you can give each layer a, a different color tone, a different saturation value, a different highlights, even change the hue and albedo if need be, change the opacity if the situation calls for it, and get a much better result. Now I am going to cache this one last time and this time I'm going to render it out. I'm using Arnold but if you want to get what you see in the viewport feel free to use uh, Maya viewport hardware and set the render cam. I'm rendering 2k. There's not much here really. You can enable motion blur if you want. And I will see you one last time to have a look at the final result. We finally reached the end of this tutorial. I rendered out two separate batches. One with Maya 2.0, which you see at the top, and the other one with Arnold Renderer at the bottom. So attributes are exactly the same. I tweak the lights ever so slightly, increase the intensity of my lights in the scenes when I rendered with Arnold. But apart from that, pretty much every single attribute is the same. You can see you get different results. The one with hardware 2.0 is slightly thicker. You get a thicker density. Uh, with Arnold, you get a, a more semi-transparent result, but it gives you a lot of control to tweak the shape and control the color and temperature of the effect. So two different looks with two different renders while you're using almost the same attributes. Um, I'll leave it with you to actually take it to the next level, mix and match and basically come up with your own look. But the principles stay the same and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned from it and use it in your own projects. Again, 
The scene file will be available on my Patreon page. Feel free to um, check out the link and download the scene file if you would like to follow along. Thank you very much again, guys, and hope to talk to you soon.